coming up on this week's episode of The Clinch. Jeremy the Pitbull Smith returns from injury and is looking for his first crap in almost two and a half years. He's got some breaking news to share with us, so stand by for some revelations. One championship kicked off their year in Jakarta with Crescent Power, where Vitaly Big Dash was defending his middleweight strap. We're going to bring you all the one highlights throughout 2017. And Norman Vessels joins me in the studio to tell us what's cooking in the FFM kitchen and his thoughts on his upcoming middleweight title shot. And Drikas Stupasi joins us live from his fight camp in Thailand. So welcome to The Clinch. Africa's most successful mixed martial arts team is undergoing a whole host of changes in 2017. Fight Fit Militia and Gracie Baja Sunning Hill are renovating their training premises and investing heavily, particularly in their world-class BJJ facility. Joining me to discuss the renovation project, as well as his own MMA goals this year, is former EFC heavyweight and light heavyweight champion Norman Vessel. Chef, thanks for coming in. Um, you've launched a crowdfunding project to renovate the gym. Uh, why did you choose that way? We really wanted to get our community involved um, in, our, in our gym and our long-term goals and aspirations. You know, the gym has been going for 10 years, and we're looking to, you know, uh, transition to another 10 years of you know successful MMA planning and uh, it's a great way to for our community members to take ownership you know of the gym and the legacy and our morals and beliefs and values and value system that we have at the gym and it's also a great way to make things a bit more visually appealing with our new youngsters and youth development program and our anti-bully boxing classes to come through and uh, yeah it's a very exciting time it's an initiative that we started about two months ago and uh, yeah it's just about taking ownership of our environment. I know it's quite a common question with crowdfunding projects, but you know, for people who want to get involved and want to contribute to it's Make a Champ, isn't it? Yeah. And what do they get out of it? How do people who contribute to the fund benefit? Well, the fund benefit is is basically our community reinvesting in our FFM legacy that we built over the last ten years, and also, you know, seeing the changes and seeing the development we have in our youth and our athletes and our amateur fighters. That's what it's really all about: is trying to create a sustainable environment where our youngsters can work, live and train, as well as you know, plan the careers going forward for the next 10 years. 90% of MMA gyms fail out there, which is the truth. And uh, you know, we want to give our community members the opportunity to invest in our team. And obviously with a the, with the crowdfunding site, uh, we've got a lot of options available on the crowdfunding site where myself and Rich are offering you know, private sessions, private sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions. We're offering um, group uh, classes, group memberships, and all that type of stuff. So there is a generally a very friendly kickback to you know, the crowdfunding site, but mainly it's for our community members just to, to invest in our community, to invest in our team, and to invest in myself and Rich and who we are and what we have our vision for martial arts excellence. Yeah, I've always known that you've involved with the community. I've been to some of your charity events, some yeah. of your white collar boxing stuff. Yeah. So I know that it's the kind of yeah. gym that does give back to the community. If people yeah. are kind of thinking, you know, why should we contribute? I know that you do, do a lot for the community. So good luck with it. If you want to get involved, you can see the details now at the bottom, bottom of your screen. What are the other goals for the fight team this year then, Norman? Well, the long-term goal that we've always had for the fighters is, is to have uh, a, an established development program going. It's, it's very easy just to take a fighter in, and it's very easy just to take a fighter in, put him in a program for a year, put him into some sort of promotion, and eventually, you know, these youngsters, they fizzle out. So we started off with the youth development program, transitioned into an amateur program, and now we've got a squad of about 20 guys that are all full-time. Mm you know, which is very exciting for us. And, and that's, that's the goal. So from there, we've got that, pro that uh, program set up and ready to go. And the next transition is not, not to think locally anymore, but to think globally. We are now actively looking, you know, for uh, our fighters to transition overseas. We're looking at 1FC, we're looking at UFC, we're looking at Bellator at the moment. And we've had some great feedback and kickback from that, yeah. which is very exciting. And that's where myself and Rich envision our team to be. And, uh, you know, that is looking very healthy and strong at the moment. Of course, we have a lot of athletes that are also EFC loyal, but, you know, we've always had the long-term vision of competing overseas. We want to take South Africa, South Africa and South African MMA global. Yeah. Well, what about your particular goals with that in mind then? Because I know we spoke last year and you were taking some time off from competing because yeah. you had some personal goals you wanted to fulfill, yeah. like getting your, your, your Gracie black belt, for example, yeah. along with Rich, Rich and Gareth. What does this year involve for you in terms of MMA competing? Are you going to be facing Yannick Bahati for that middleweight belt or not? My priority at the moment is obviously facing Yannick Bahati in May, June. Uh, but I still have other ambitions in between that I would like to succeed in. Um, I'd like to get my SA colors in powerlifting this year, and then also I'd like to get active on the competing front for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I think that is definitely the next phase or the next step for our gym and our community as a whole. Mm. And uh, myself and Richard are definitely leading from the front from that side of things. 
Um, yeah, but obviously the main focus for me is, you know, in my mind's eye is fighting Yanni Bahati and, you know, stepping up to that. Yeah, winning that fight would hand you a third EFC belt. I mean, is, is making history important to you or is there something, a different motivation that burns even brighter inside you? I've never been a career fighter in the traditional sense. Um, I've always been, uh, you know, cerebral around my fights. I've always been uh, mental around my fights and intention-based around my fights. The challenge of, you know, morphing my body, changing my body and changing my, my body to get down to middleweight is very, very exciting for me. It's very, very exciting for me. I have, I have definitely got some, you know, issues of morals and principles with Yannick Bhatti and how he certainly has treated the South African community. And I feel like, I feel like I'm drawn towards that. And that's definitely very inspiring for me to actually, you know, step up and show him what we as South Africans are all about. Um, but from that sense, um, I focus on my mental game and I focus on, on little things like character and I focus on little things like intentions and, you know, what you perceive, as a, uh, you perceive yourself to be. And my objective around that is basically to break all of that. Wow. I mean, I know that when it comes to Bahati, uh, you're also a pretty good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, but your back attack is still something incredible. Is your Jits game still all about control? Because you've become so fierce in your grappling ability. In fact, I've got a little treat for you because we were trawling through the archives and we found this from EFC 5 in 2010 when you beat Bernardo Makishi by first round rear naked choke to win the belt. Just take a look. I never go into the ring with the assumption that I'm going to win. You know, I go in there believing in my skill and I'm confident in how I've trained. Um, and I wanted to systematically chop him down and systematically make him work for every single inch. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I never actually felt that I felt that I was on top of him. I felt I was in control and control is good and control, you know, gives you more confidence and just gives you more control at the end of the day. So yeah, it just, it just all worked out really, really well. And how many ways have you evolved since then as a mixed martial artist, Norm? I focused. Oh, the, obviously, the the skill progression has been natural with the with the level of training that we you know keep and maintain at at FFM. But over the time, over this time, and over, and over this time since that last fight, I've really focused on my mentality and my intention, and that has really has really drive me into finishing fights. My back attack has evolved a lot since then. It's become more aggressive. Um, more aggressive and the systematic plan to get there has become more effective and more efficient. I've actually added two elements to control and that's been patience and pressure. So uh, maturity has given me the patience, you know, my physicality and my adaptations to my physiology has given me the pressure and now that's just made my control way, 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 way worse. Yeah, the few times I rolled with you, you still taught me a lot. I mean, you took my back, you put me in a cross face, I just pulled your arm down straight into the rear naked. There's no, no one can eat. Doucher couldn't escape it. No one can escape it. I'd be very impressed if Yannick Bahati could escape it. Um, of course, you awarded those black belts alongside Richard Kwan and, and, uh, and Gareth. Um, were you shocked when Gareth left Fight Fit Militia when he, when he announced he was leaving the camp? Yeah, uh, you know, myself and Rich and Gareth, we were best friends for close to 10 years. So it was, it was a big shock when he left, but you know, that's his natural progression and we need to respect that and give him the space to do what he feels he needs to do. You know, there's been a lot of things going on, there's been a lot of things being said, but we know Gareth for a long time and he's obviously got his reasons around that. And we need to respect that and give him, and give him his space. At the end of the day, he's doing what, he's, um, what he feels is best for him. Uh, myself and Rich have never been yes men, we've always been honest with him. And I think sometimes, you know, honesty, the honesty that we gave him as best friends and as teammates, training partners, coaches, sparring partners, um, is not something that he wanted to digest at that, obviously, in his period of life, um, where he is with that. But, uh, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with him. And, you know, he's, you know, he's moving on. And I'm happy for him. And there's progression. Um, you know, and we wish him all the best and best of luck and success with that. Well, I know with progression, there's going to be a lot more news coming out of Fight Fit Militia yeah. in 2007. So you've got a cracking fight team, JP, DeMart, Chad, Timber. That's a whole bunch of guys coming up that I'm really excited to see 2017. Talk about progress. Fight Militia is going to do it. Good luck with the project. Norman, with the FFM Regenerate Project. Get involved. Those details again at the bottom of my screen. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, man. 2016 was a good one for Drikas to see. He won the EFC welterweight title against Martin van Staden and then successfully defended it against the Polish berserker Rafael Haratik just before Christmas here in Johannesburg. But now he's announced an upcoming bout at Legend MMA 
against Corey Nelson on the 28th of January in Queensland, Australia. He joins us live from his camp at Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket. Hey, Drikas, I want to talk to you about Thailand and Australia and your type of defence in a minute, but I simply have to ask you about your immediate reaction to your teammate, Michal Oppermann, tested positive uh, this week for a banned substance. What are your immediate reactions? Uh, first of all, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, um, I'm 100% sure what he was cooperating with uh, the drug for sports, making sure that this gets sorted out real quick. I mean, I think it's a technicality. It's something, uh, no, it's uh, something small. No, everybody knows my feel. I know him. I know he's not a guy. Who, he's not a cheater. It's not what he is. It's uh, he didn't find a steroid or something in his in his system. It's just a a small technicality, and I'm pretty sure they'll sort it out uh, ASAP. Yeah, it's um, yeah. He's the last guy I really think would get ever ever pop for that. Have you spoken to Michiel about the news news yet? I mean, how's he coping? Yeah, I mean, uh, we uh, he sent me a WhatsApp giving me the news and. Uh, uh, we talked about it and I was like, be sure we'll be back in no time. So how's your fight prep, prep going? You've got this fight coming up in, in, in uh, Australia and Queensland next week. I mean, how's the training camp been going in Phuket? Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I, got, uh, I only took off two days after my fight against Rafa Hotek. Uh, flew down here the week after, after my fight. And uh, so, yeah, I was still fresh, um, fitness-wise. Strength wise, everything the only difference for this fight was weight, and uh, yeah, so I was still fresh in camp, still uh, good. It was a bit hard, you know, over the festive season, not being with my family, not being able to to, um, to uh, enjoy the festive season. But camp has been going great. I mean, I've been pushing harder than ever. This is a huge opportunity for me. It's uh, my first time fighting a professional MMA bout abroad, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, camp has been going great, no injuries. Uh, and yeah, it, uh, so many guys here to spar with, different guys, different levels, everything. So I mean, it was, it's absolutely awesome. I had a great camp here. Yeah, I'm feeling good. So you're still fighting Corey Nelson. I did hear some rumors that he was, he was off and you got replacement bout. Is that, is any, any truth to that? <laughs> yes, actually, they uh, literally just before the call, um, we talked about it. He, this morning, he had some issue and he had to withdraw from the fight, but uh, so had the Brazilian uh, a uh, USC veteran, a uh, Brazilian guy who was supposed to headline the fight card. And this now means, uh, well, they asked me, and I said, sure, sure thing. Um, if I would be able to step in at Welterweight still to face Stephen Kennedy ah. at Welterweight for the main event. Sure, I mean, you've, um, you're off to the Gold Coast next week then. I mean, how did the deal with Legend MMA come about? And, and uh, what was EFC's uh, response? How did that conversation go down? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, James uh, McSweeney asked me, said, well, yeah, James McSweeney, uh, uh, I met him here in Thailand uh, about three years ago, two, three years ago. He was coaching at a seminar here, and uh, he just mailed me and said, listen, I have this show in uh, 2017, will you be keen to, to fight? And I said, well, I am contracted with the EFC, so... Give me the details and we and uh, I can see what we can do because I know there is protocol where they do give guys permission to go fight. And uh, I asked the EFC, what's the, well, what does the promotion need to to have for me to be able to go and fight there? And they said they made they had to make sure that medicals are in order. They had to make sure the pay is good. You know, they don't want their fighters to get hurt yeah. or be, you know, not being treated accordingly. And uh, yeah, a legend, fight promotions, um, this, uh, Jason Sweeney, he just took care of all of that. I got all the medical info I needed. Uh, they took all the necessary steps, blood tests, all that stuff. The pay is good. And, um, yeah, so there was uh, there was no hiccups. There was no reason not for me not to fight there. It's only a one-fight deal. So, yeah, there wasn't a problem. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I just think it's a huge opportunity. And I'm very, very thankful for it. Of course, there are going to be huge implications when you, you know, when, when you beat this guy next week in terms of your, your international marketability. Is that something you're looking for to fight again overseas more, more, next, more this year? Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if uh, somebody sees something special in me in this fight, which I'm pretty sure they will, uh, I come to this fight wanting to put, in, put up a better performance than I did in my last fight. And uh, my last fight was, was, I feel, one of my best here. Mm. 
and uh, I want to just be keep getting better and better and better and perform better for for everybody to see. And yeah, this fight is a different country. Even though I think EFC is a huge promotion, it's not like this is a bigger promotion or anything like that. I just think it's going to be a whole lot of different eyes on it, and uh, some more people to see that the Af- MMA on the African continent is isn't what they what they make it out to be. It is competitive with the rest of the world, and that's what I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there to show the people of the world that um, the uh, MMA on the African continent is competitive with the world's best and that we are ready for, for that stage. Or at least some of us are definitely ready for that stage. Yeah, I completely agree with you that. So then let's, let's take it back home then. Your next title defense in South Africa, when's it going to be? And will it be against Henry Fidipe? Or you know, are you going to demand to face Yannick Bahati? Because it seems the last time you guys faced, you were itching to... Uh, to give them the right spanking, weren't you? I mean, there was an altercation backstage at weigh-in. You guys had, uh, had words at the press conference. You're supposed to fight for Dipe, but it seems like you want a piece of Bahati like anyone else. Uh, you know, it's, uh, for Dipe, it's, uh, it's a hard fight to take, you know, considering he's pulled out three times, and this time it will be on my terms. Uh, uh, there's, there's, I, I think it's ridiculous, actually, that he does, if he does get the fight. But I do think uh, the UFC would like to put up that fight, but I think it will be, it, uh, it puts my belt in a bad light. Um, but, you know, if they, if they want to give him the, the shot, then so be it. But, uh, yeah, Yannick Mahati, that will, be, that will be definitely a preference of mine to fight him for his belt, become the first two-way division champion in the UFC. And, yeah, I would much rather like to give uh, that Mahati a spanking than Fadipe. <laughs> well, good luck <laughs> next week, Drickers. Thanks for joining us. One Championship Press for Power took place in Jakarta at the weekend with a great mixture of submissions and knockouts. The featherweight bout between AJ Paralias Mansour and Anti England was billed as a Malaysia versus Indonesia local derby fight. A fantastic KO. But the final punch didn't have that much weight behind it, and at the age of 41, Paro needs to face some difficult decisions. Certainly, a spectacular knockout with England felling his opponent like Timberwood in just under two minutes in the first round. England, who's half Dutch and trains out the Netherlands, goes to six wins with just two losses. Lightweight contenders Vincent Latoul and Vaughan the Spawn Donari put on a cracking fight for the fans, tagging each other with intense combinations for the majority of a back and forth war. On the mat, Donari showcased his grappling skills, threatening with some great submission attempts off his back. The tool, however, was more consistent throughout and scored points with some great takedowns and cage control. All three judges saw the bout in favor of the tool to win by unanimous decision. And in the co-main event of the evening, 27-year-old Martin, the situation and Guyan from Sydney, Australia, scored one of the most spectacular finishes of the evening, stopping Japanese MMA veteran Kazunori Yokota with strikes to win by technical knockout just past the midway point of the first round. Yokota stalked on Guyan looking to throw combinations, but the Aussie timed Yokota with an overhand right that dropped into the canvas. From there, Nguyen jumped on his opponent and rained down punches from the top to earn his sixth first round stop his victory. In the main event of the evening, one middleweight world champion, Vitaly Big Dash from Russia, changed the entire fight with that head kick after two rounds. Now, to be honest with you, we're pretty tame. He impressed with a great show of strength and a dominant performance over the Burmese python Ong Lan Sang from Myanmar. Throughout the bout, Big Dash kept from Sang at bay with his sharp combinations, while on the mat, he connected with multiple elbows. The Russian was really never in trouble. The man from Rostov was simply far superior in all areas of the sport. After five rounds of action, it was a clear win for the highly talented Big Dash, who met very little resistance in outlasting the durable Ensang to remain undefeated, retaining his one middleweight world championship. Asia's biggest and best promotion returns to KL on the 10th of February when Ev Ting fights in his hometown against the Prince of Persia, Iranian veteran Kamar Shalarus. And then Bangkok on my birthday, the 11th of March. Can't wait to see the incredibly talented and undefeated Canadian Angela Lee defend her world atomweight title against Taiwan's Jenny Huang. We'll bring you all the highlights from those cracking events and all the others from one championship throughout 2017. Well, I last spoke to the pit bull Jeremy Smith last year in June after he broke his arm in training, an injury that forced him to withdraw from a fight with J.P. Kruger, which would have been a cracking scrap. He's back and ready to roll and joins me now in studio. Jeremy, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. If I thanks remember, 
that, that, that was a spinning back fist you tried against a, a training partner that broke your ulnar bone in two. I mean, uh, I, I assume you're back fighting fit now. No, no, it's perfect now. It's healed completely. Um, yeah, it's strong again. I don't know if I'm going to try that one again. But uh, it's not tender. It's taken kicks and knees, and it's just felt good. Great. Isn't it an indication of how tough you CT CIT guys are when you break your arm in two against an opponent's <laughs> head? I mean, it's, uh, you guys are tough, though, aren't you? No, we, tr we train hard. We train hard and fight easy. That's the motto we live by. So, the so more, the you're more ready work to you put in the camp, the easier the fight is. So you're ready to roll. Um, yes. You're ready to fight. I mean, have you got a fight lined up next? What's going on then? Yes, I do. I've actually signed with an organisation called Brave. Um, I'm going to be fighting on their first card in Curitiba, Brazil. I'm looking forward to it. It's a um, nice, nice stepping stone for me to get out there again. So. Yeah. Well, wow, so that's their first fight card of the year in Brazil, and you've already yes. and you're signed with them, have you? Signed with them already. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So this is Brave MMA uh, organization based in Bahrain. You're straight away yeah. in Brazil. Who's your opponent? Do you know? Um, Marcos Parata. Course, uh, and you're fighting at middleweight. Fighting at middleweight, correct. Wow. What do you make of him? Is he tough? Um, yeah, he looks good. Looks tough. Good. More of a stand-up fighter, as far as I could see. So it's going to be a nice fight. I think. Yeah, that's why they're going to put us together. I think it's he's fighting in his hometown. Right. So it'll be, he'll have the advantage of that, but I've always fought as an underdog, so I don't mind that. Yeah, I mean, as a Brazilian, you've got to be careful of his ground game, but I'm assuming being at CIT, CIT all this time with Mornay and those guys, that you're, you're ready for that, aren't you? Yeah, no, we're ready for that. We've got a tiller covering our ground as well, so he knows his story. So is that a multi-fight contract you're signed with him? Yes, I did. I signed a three-fight deal. A three-fight deal. Yeah. And why do you decide uh, to sign with Brave? I mean, you've been fighting professionally at the highest level for so many years now, um, with a variety of, of international organizations, you could have chosen your pick. So why do you choose Brave? Well, the way that they, it was really nice to work with them and they treated me nicely and the organization, they looked after you. They, I felt they were going to look after me and I thought that it would be a nice, nice plateau for me to get out there again and to showcase my abilities. And it's, the nice thing about it is it's around the world. It's not just one country. So I get to travel and fight in different places, different opponents. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it looks like a good place to... Showcase my abilities. Yeah, because you're not the only South African fighting on that fight card, are you? I think, I think Reedy Roots fighting on Yes, that, I on heard that there was card. someone else fighting. Because that's really unheard of. I mean, with, with, at the moment, we're just aware of Gareth McLennan, fight, the, the only South African fighter fighting internationally. And all of a sudden, you've got Brave coming into the market, and boom, you've got two South Africans on the first fight card of the year. Yeah, Amazing. Well, I think it's brilliant to get us out there. We need to step out and get out of our little shell at the bottom now. We need to, and we've got good talent. We need to get better. And the only way we're going to get better is by fighting internationally. Yeah, they're quite an interesting bunch, aren't they? Because they're owned by uh, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who's a, a Bahraini prince and military yeah. officer. And in fact, we do have some footage from the weekend of, of, of his highness remaining undefeated, taking the decision against Manish Kumar. Um, absolutely incredible. And I can't imagine Prince William doing this in Bama, can you? It's really quite incredible. Royal owners who fight professionally. How's it, so they've been cool to deal with. I mean, have you met yeah, them? Yeah, I haven't met them personally, like in person, obviously, yeah. but I've, had, I've tried to do them. Um, yeah, they're, they're very cool to talk to. Obviously, they understand the fighter because they do it. So he does it. He understands what's going into the training. He understands what you've got to put into it. So he's very lenient in certain things like that. So he's not like, he understands what you're doing. Mm. So he understands what you put into it. So are you still contracted with the EFC or, or, or were they cool with this? Or what, how they, were very, they were very understanding about me going overseas. They didn't hold back or anything. They were very happy and they just wished me all the best and said, go ahead and make South Africa proud. Wow, well, that's fantastic. Because Brave are also making some really great signings other than yourself. As a Brit, I'm really excited to see Charlie Leary enter their lightweight division. And Frankie Edgar, uh, a veteran uh, UFC fighter, joins our good friend Cyrus Fees in the commentary booth for Brazil. But these guys aren't playing around, are they? They're making some great signings. Well, I think they have some good backing. So, yeah. um, I take it you're going to remain then at CIT. Uh, yes, and, and you're not going to be a stranger to the South African No, 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 of course not. No, I'll still be based here and I'll be training here and then I'll just fight overseas. I'm very happy at the CIT camp with Monet and Attila and all the guys there. We have a great camp. We, I think we're the best camp in the country. Um, good group of guys, and we all have this, the same mindset. So. Of course, we had the news this week that uh, uh, Michiel tested positive, unfortunately. Well, he, he was yes. teammate and his friend. What was, what was your immediate reaction to this? I was shocked. <laughs> it was also, uh, they haven't really released exactly what the testing thing was. It was some sort of substance that he could have picked up in meat. He's still got a hearing or something like that. I don't yeah. know the exact, I don't want to get into it. So yeah. not, they've got a hearing to deal with. Um, I was very shocked about it. <laughs> it was kind of took me off guard because Michiel of all people, so yeah. maybe test positive for, yeah, but that's it. Yeah, he's the last person on the yeah. entire EFC roster I'd, I'd really uh, yeah, you know. expect. 
What else have you got coming up this year in 2007? So you're concentrating on Brave, you're concentrating on three yes, fights, you've got Curitiba, it's the end of February in Brazil, it's going to be a cracking fight. We'll be covering them one way or another, so don't worry if you know, we'll, we'll be able to see some of Jeremy's fight there, that's for sure. But what else you got going on? I think they've actually moved it to March. Right? Is it to March I think now? it's March, okay. yeah. Just, cool. um, yeah, well, that, I just want to focus on that for now, get that out the way, and then go on to the next opponent. So I'm just happy to be back in, in, back in fighting. I've been off for too long, obviously the injuries and a little bit of setbacks, but yeah, I'm back now and I'm ready and I've been training hard. I've been training hard for the last, what, two years? It's not, not like I haven't been training, I've been training just waiting for a fight. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's been two and a half years since your since Yeah, your, almost since two and a half years, yeah. Fight. But yeah. Any, any, any idea about cage rest straight out of the window? Absolutely no problem. Um, we'll be fighting every day in the gym, so it should be fun. Well, Jeremy, good luck with Brave. Thank we're you so be much. Following, we're going to be following Brave and following your fight, and uh, you're going to bring the win home back to Pretoria, cool. mate. Good luck. I just want to say thanks a lot to Brave for giving me the opportunity and for South Africans to follow in my footsteps, maybe. It would be great, and yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. Cool, mate. Thanks very cool. much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. That's your lot for this week's episode of The Clinch. Don't forget you can get hold of us through all the usual social media accounts. If there's anything whatsoever that you want to share or you want to see, please get hold of us. You can also email us, theclinch at enca.com. Join me next week for more insight, features and interviews. Thanks for watching. Be good.